Hey guys, uh, I don't know if I'd call this much of an update or anything. Just a uh, quick little talk. I went out to uh, take the dogs out, go for a walk, patrol the neighborhood Friday night. And uh, I meet uh, an Ecuadorian friend of mine. Uh, lives uh, a little bit bare hair in my beard. That's so. Uh, or am I getting gray? I don't know. Anyway, uh, well, actually the daughter of an Ecuadorian friend that I have, and you know, they've been through Chavez and then through uh, political instability, they're following through corruption, and also the fact that the um, Ecuadorian currency is closely tied to oil, so Obviously, they're having uh, a, a bit of a difficult time. The weather, uh, apparently, is hot. But um, with her was traveling a, a valet working here in the States. He's from uh, Greece. And he is a Orthodox Christian, which you could expect from Greece. And he wondered uh, to me aloud, as we uh, began to talk, uh, why... The Greek Orthodox uh, Christians were not attacked as the Muslims moved through their country. Historically speaking, the Muslims in all of their crusades, and uh, yes, there have been Muslim crusades against Christians that are not very well documented. What many people call the Dark Ages is... Uh, the Middle Ages, uh, the fall of Rome after the Visigoths sacked Rome. Sacked Rome. Uh, yeah, there was a major push by the Muslims that went all the way up into Spain. Uh, do you ever wonder why Ferdinand and Isabella of Spain killed absolutely everyone that was not uh, a Catholic? Uh, because of the Moors and the Muslims. And you look at the Muslims now in Spain, the Muslims now in France and in Sweden, and you're seeing that same type of pushback. Uh, the culture, uh, a theocracy, a, um, a, um, it, it's not just a, a theocracy, but a fanatical theocracy. Okay, so it's, um, a, a totalitarian wing of a, uh, religious bent, so um, fanatical theocracy, and they'll operate w inside and outside of borders. But to to this um, Greek's point, he said that uh, I am an Orthodox Christian, which is essentially what all the Russians ascribe to as well. You have to understand that Greece sits right next to Turkey, and and uh, Greece uh, was about to pivot to Russia. Still, they're right on the cusp of leaving the EU. They voted to get the fuck out, but um, Villafakis, the prime minister of um, Greece, um, or financial prime minister, I'm not exactly sure how that works, uh, said you know he would resign if they didn't get out, he did quit, there was a, this and that. I mean, democracy in Greece is so old, it, it obviously is very corrupt. I mean, it's not a republic, it's something else. But regardless, uh, the, uh, the religion part is important. That's what I wanted to bring up. Why had none of the people in Greece been attacked by the Muslims that were passing through the country. Why? Because uh, Orthodox Christians would make a prime target, easily reached by anywhere in the Mediterranean, um, from Africa, from Egypt. I mean, it's a simple journey, and yet they choose to attack people in Sweden and France. Um... Most specifically, I'd like to say, uh, Little Mogadishu, they call it now, and that is, this is a Swedish place, uh, Reykjavik, Reykjavik. 
This is all a uh, global power play that's trying to force uh, SDR down our throats. And that's coming. That's coming. A global currency is coming. It's called special drawing rights. Uh, what's going to happen in all the Western world and then to the Eastern world that follows? And Putin is in on it. He is. I mean, this is this is it. Um, uh, essentially, the the currencies are going to collapse. What they were trying to do was provoke war, like they've done in World War One, right? You know, around that financial crash, World War Two, right around that financial crash, World War Three, right around the financial crash, to distract the people in order to uh, get them to blame another national thing and get them to accept the same rigmarole, the same game. Uh, so a few can control the many. Um, so SDR is a, a basket uh, of currencies that create a world currency. Um, you'll still see the dollar in use, but the dollar will become more of something like the, um, of the peso. You just won't have the international recognition because things won't be bought in dollars. Gold won't be traded in dollars. Oil won't be traded in dollars. They talk so much about petrodollar. It's all going to be SDR, special drawing rights. The IMF dictates the interest rates on that. You're talking about a Federal Reserve Bank on steroids. So, uh, I ask uh, my friend here, my new friends, from um, Ecuador and from Greece, you know, uh, are, are you prepared? I mean, do you know what you're going to do to be able to um, either uh, be able to enter that world, evade that world, or to be able to um, capitalize or something, you know, to not, because I'm, I'm telling you right now, people are going to die. Um, they're going to die. Uh, it, it, you're looking at, right now, we're, we're standing on the cusp of a, a wonderful but disturbing time. You know, uh, it's an old Jewish curse to say, uh, may you live in interesting times. Well, interesting times are upon us, my friends. And it is a curse, but it is a blessing because it does make the blood boil in the heart and uh, it gives you it gives you a meaning to live to understand and it takes it's going to take a, it's going to take quite a bit and I and I have some solutions but they they um, need to be worked out a little bit the blockchain is secure. It's the um, it's the exchanges that are not. Um, like uh, for example, you you can't crack the uh, you can't crack the blockchain, but you can crack the person uh, or the brokerage, if you will, if you're trying to buy Bitcoin in exchange for cash. That's where you're because the the brokerage would have to have the the um, key of the buyer and the key of the seller, and that's where you can crack it. And uh, um, but that's going to be the only thing that's going to that's going to save your nut in this global uh, world because it's um, it's and they're gonna, they're going to smash down hard. I mean, you don't think you've seen a fist before? You're going to see an iron fist. Um, China tried to make it illegal. They couldn't. I mean, look at the Silk Road. I mean, Ross got away with $1.2 billion. The Silk Road, before it became you know, something that you would be able to speak about, transacted business in Bitcoin in the billions of dollars. So we know it's a stable platform because it's the one that cra uh, crackers, hackers, and criminals use. Because it is untraceable. 
Um, there is a ledger that exists between uh, Bitcoin users, one of the receiver and one of the sender. But to be able to go to backtrack through all that, um, there are a few people in the world that can do it. So uh, that's the difference between Ethereum and um, Bitcoin. Ethereum is a little bit more anonymous than, than Bitcoin. It keeps things in, in a ledger. Um, and quite personally, quite, fr quite frankly, I don't want to see criminals uh, flourish. You know, uh, uh, hackers or black hat, black hat hackers get into our monetary systems like they have in our banking systems. Um, but I, I digress. Um, but, um, yeah, the, um, the Ecuadorians are with us. The um, Greeks are with us. The Russians are with us. Um, the Syrians are with us. The British are with us. This is not a... Uh, this is not a nationalistic thing. You guys, I mean, you're if you're a nationalist, then you are confining yourself uh, to the divide and conquer. You are already playing into the globalist game. The globalists, and, and most people um, that talk about... Um, Nationalism typically are a little bit older. I mean, got to be in their 50s, I would think, at least. Like, nationalism is going to save you against glo globalists. No, these these are, are uh, very powerful, very well-funded people operating in smoky dark rooms. And I've seen it happen. I mean, I've made policy in that way. But, um, and Anon makes policy in that way. I wish I had more computer skills, but I don't, unfortunately. I'm not able to code or I mean, anything. I'm barely able to post a coherent YouTube video. But um, anyway, um, the people of the world are with us. So uh, don't fear. Don't be violent. Uh, Look for new opportunities, new solutions. And uh, right here, right with you, Hank, peace.